Have you ever broken a bone or signed your friend's cast? Well, that's our topic for today. We will be learning about what happens when you break a bone. I'm Mary Ellen, the Body Dog. Welcome to my Clinic of Marvels. Okay, so we've talked a bit about what bones do. We've established that they're very important to our function, not just as a sturdy framework for our muscles and protection of our organs, but also as the storage and release of minerals and formation of blood cells. So what happens when one breaks? Uh, Are you okay, Jack? That, that's horrible. I, I can't believe you can even speak of it. Just the thought of it sends a shiver up my spine. Well, we're talking about broken bones today, so maybe you should put your headphones on. Okay, well just tell me when you're done and, and not a minute before. I really can't wait for Jack to overcome his agoraphobia. Okay, I say about hands. I just don't know how much more hands. singing I can take. They can do a lot of things. They if you remember from episode one, bones aren't just thick, solid structures. They have microscopic passageways for blood and lymph vessels and also contain red and yellow bone marrow. So keep this in the back of your mind as we explore what happens when you break a bone. Let's use a real life story example. When I was a kid, I was at my friend Meg's house for a birthday party. Meg had the coolest house. She had a pool with a water slide, all the latest toys, and by far the best, an Olympic-sized trampoline. Now, back in these days, we didn't have nets on our trampolines, and my friends thought it would be fun to put a heap of mattresses and pillows on the ground and jump onto them from the trampoline. But when my poor friend Beck landed on the pile, she felt an immediate pain in her arm. The force of landing on the ground was greater than the strength of her bone, so it broke. This is also known as a fracture. Bleeding and inflammation occur immediately as soon as the fracture happens. The bone starts to bleed because remember, it's got lots of blood vessels. This is called a hemorrhage. In time, the blood collects to form what's known as a hematoma. We also get inflammation. This is when an injury happens in the body and the body acts to heal it. So it calls upon a very particular group of cells whose job it is to repair damage. The inflammatory cells go to the area and get to work. Then more are called to the area to help them out. Then our connective tissue cells in the area start to multiply. So the cells that form our bones, cartilage and other tissues start to increase in number and form a massive tissue around the fracture. And they go to work. We've got cells moving debris and getting rid of harmful germs. We've got cells starting to weave new bone. We've got cells making collagen and cartilage. We've got blood vessels growing into the region until eventually, after a fair bit of work, we have a bony callus where the fracture was. <laughs> Woven bone is then created, which is an immature type of bone tissue. So this means the new bone isn't as strong as the old one because it's still young but eventually it undergoes a remodeling process and is replaced. It then becomes compact bone as it previously was. It can take several months for a fracture to fully heal. In this time, you may have to wear a cast and get all your friends to sign it. If you've fractured your leg, your foot, your ankle, you might even need crutches. There's all different ways to break a bone and different types of fractures with different names and even different methods of treatment. We'll go into all of that at a later date, but for now, eat lots of veggies, do some fun exercise to keep your bones growing strong. I think I'll leave Jack listening to his music for a bit longer. And I'm gonna go out the back and listen to some cockatoo screeching because that's better than this. I know smells. <laughs> 